Matt Hansen. I'm outside the Winona Interstate Bridge, one of the very bridges that will be replaced due to the I-35W bridge collapse. Today, we will be talking about some of the ethics breaches that Sverdrup and Parcel and MnDOT had during the entire lifetime of the I-35W bridge. We will also discuss how the entire collapse may have been avoided if the ASME and AICHD code of ethics had been obeyed as a lesson for engineers to follow ethics in the future. My name is Andrew Bolson, here to talk about the first canons on both the ASME and AICHE code of ethics, which are really just letting engineers know that public safety is priority number one. When discussing the I-35W bridge, there are some examples of good ethics. One example is MnDOT hiring a company to analyze the bridge after the inspection, which deemed it structurally deficient. Another good example includes the mandated bridge inspections following the collapse, an attempt to prevent another incident. These actions show care for public safety and upheld the first canons. However, the bridge fell because public safety was not held paramount. Canons number one were violated multiple times, and it starts with the design of the bridge by Sverdrup and Parcel. If designed correctly, the entire incident would have been avoided, and there's a chance someone knew about the mistakes and didn't say anything. This is covered by Canon number one, but also by AICHE's Canon number two, where it is stated that engineers should advise clients of a mistake if they believe it could be detrimental to public safety. Other ways Canon number one were violated include no timely repairs to a bridge deemed structurally deficient and allowing the bridge to be open to the public during heavy construction on the increased deck thickness. ASME Canon number seven and AICHE Canon number four states, engineers shall issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner and shall avoid any conduct which brings discredit upon the profession. Following the collapse, MnDOT showed good ethics by releasing several truthful and objective documents in order to describe what went wrong and to show the public how a similar disaster would be prevented. However, they also showed bad ethics by restricting the public from viewing the collapse. By doing this, MnDOT denied citizens public information and angered many because the bridge was publicly financed. This is an example of how mishandling public information can bring discredit on the profession. Now that it's known what was done right and wrong, we can relate it to our future choices. If we ever receive information that our work may create a risk to the public or environment, we need to communicate that and take precautions to ensure safety. We must consider closing off access to the public during construction efforts if the work could do more harm than good. If a tragedy does occur, act quickly to understand any possible implications and potentially prevent the next incident. Be forthcoming with our mistakes as soon as they are realized in order to maintain the safety of the public. We must present information and give public statements in a forthcoming, transparent way. Doing this, along with being truthful in our statements, can ensure we don't discredit engineering professions. Whether or not these lessons were followed in the wake of the I-35W bridge collapse doesn't matter anymore. We need to learn from the mistakes and repeat what was done correctly in order to advance both the integrity of engineering professions and the welfare of society.